housing problems, and both of these can be worked out, and the solution is here, and I've got it uh, myself. It's only about a 20-page uh, uh, plan, but it, what it does specifically is it takes the uh, $108,000 cap off of our Social Security uh, money. It makes everyone pay their fair share for Social Security, which has never been done until this day. It still isn't done yet. All these multi-millionaires aren't paying their fair share. So what this new tax plan does is it irons that out and makes it, makes, makes it fair for everyone. It's uh, just an amazing plan. But uh, it also does a few other things, like brings back our industry uh, to this country, uh, creating jobs, uh, making our job market flourish once again uh, by the legalization of hemp and the implementation of it into over 600 household products. We'll have the whole country working within a year. Everyone will have a job, and everyone will be happy. And there will be chicken in every pot again, and people will say, hey, the whole world's changed. I like this. It's, it, you know, the whole technology is here right now. You know, we had, a, I've just watched a couple of films by some people that are converting ordinary cars into electric cars. It'll do 12 seconds and a quarter. Right. And we had that technology a hundred years ago. And the electric car was it until we got sucked into the whole Rothschild, Rockefeller, oil scam. Yep. And what you just said, your slogan, I believe, should be that hemp and hydrogen. Between the two, you could, if you can put water in your in your car and get the motor started and take you uh, maybe I take you up a hill, and while the wheels are turning, those wheels are generating electricity to feed your batteries for your electricity. You can go across the country in an electric car and never spend a dime on gasoline. Exactly. And exactly. if if this technology is available from this uh, from this uh, uh, Iranian firm, and I firmly believe this is why we're talking about war with Iran, they ain't gonna tell you the real reason. I'm telling you the real reason, because yep. if they got this technology, they don't need the oil. They can sell all the oil to us and run their th their their whole country for nothing. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's what the whole war is about. I think that's what the entire, entire skirmishes have always been about. Now, uh, the, the, the thing, the question that pops up into my mind, and I want you to address this, David, mm -hmm. is, I, I, I've, in my little article here that I'm working on, I've got it, uh, I've got a link to Shakespeare, you know, the whole world's a stage, and there are more things, Horatio, on heaven and earth than you've dreamed of. And I believe, uh, uh, what if, what if this technology has been around for a long time, and the people that have access to this technology have been actually guiding and ruling and enslaving us for a few thousand years? Well, they have. You know what's obvious to me now, it just it, it sticks out like a sore thumb, is the fact that the pyramids were built and operational. The fact that the Mayans had all those big stone step pyramids built down there. And, and there's all these stories about the Atlantean civilization and whatnot. Well, this is what happened on the planet Earth. Civilization actually reached a pinnacle or a high point before the reptilians came in here and brought this artificial moon in. And then we all became stupid. The pure of the planet started to surface, so the population became, became dumbed down, and they're all subservient now. And the way it is that they all fight. They fight with each other. Women fight with men. Women fight with each other. They fight with the women. They fight with the kids. Who fight each other? We got football. We got basketball. We got competition going. It, it's, with, it, with it, violence. it's like David that there's some entity out there that feels off, feeds off the negativity, and and exactly. the good guys keep coming and telling you, hey, do you know what love is, Bob? That's your level of uh, vibrational energy, you know, you know. And in the '60s, what we were, we were talking about love. I mean, you know, that was that right. was the but primary now, now thing. They, they got, they've got love painted like sex, you know. They, they got it in every window when you walk by it. 
that's 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 the programming. That's to take you down and lower you down to a primal animal animal level. I mean, I got a good good demonstration of that right here, man. You know, yeah. my, my, my Harley riding Chihuahua got laid the other day, and now, you know, he can't get his nose out of it, you know? <laughs> so, they even try to sell the, uh, the physical body with all these uh, steroids and, and weight, weightlifting systems to pump you up and make you look like something you're not, and then they tell you to go out and, and kick some ass or, or, uh, or uh, get a girl, you know, and it's like... What are you wasting your time for? You're wasting your life. You're wasting your all your energy doing the wrong thing for the wrong reason. Now, now let me say there, 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 there was there was two there were two, two classes of people. I said that uh, aren't being reached and aren't being spoken to. One is our veterans. I mean, because they have tried consistently to kill our young men, our soldiers. They've tried consistently to do that. They've set up wars, you know, 54,000 of my brothers killed in Vietnam, and, and more wounded and destroyed by Agent Orange and depleted uranium. Two is your ex-convicts. I mean, just because you got busted with a little bit of smoke doesn't mean that you ought to not be able to ever vote again for a presidential candidate. And three, we've got... Uh, we've got uh, all of these criminals, these ex-cons that have been created by this whole uh, 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 illegal seizure and, and making uh, hemp unlawful here. I mean, come on folks, your constitution, your flag, everything was written on hemp. Our, our oh, yeah. Encyclopedia Britannica was published on hemp and uh, Everything's on him. Our flag was made out of it. Our jeans were made out of it. And we said we conquered the whole world. We sailed all over the world using hip sails. Well, I, I always was wondering when I see all these pictures of Egyptians and and uh, Africans and and uh, being from all over the planet for all time. You see them in their their garments and whatnot. Those weren't cotton garments. They weren't cotton. Cotton wears out in less than a year with that. They were all hemp made cloth. All their clothes from all over the world for all time were made out of hemp. Levi Levi food. made his blue jeans out of sailcloth, folks, and that was made out of hemp. Hemp, yeah, right, right. So all those old Egyptians and all the carvings and all the, the all the sides of all the buildings and whatnot, they're all wearing hemp cloth around from those long draping gowns and whatnot. They're all hemp. They're not cotton. <laughs> But, uh, like I say, we've been dumbed down in this day and age by uh, uh, the reptilian invaders, which came here a long time ago and uh, set the moon above our heads, which is a hollow orb, and uh, it, it keeps us fighting with each other and, and keeps us angry all the time, and it also makes women's cycle every 28 days much, much, much worse than it should be. Uh, actually, uh, women should suffer very little right. at all. Let me, I, 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 who, who put up the moon? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know on that. It's some good theories, and I'm certainly, they, I'm certainly got bases and uh, underground bases up on the moon. I'm sure of that. And I believe we got the technology to uh, go there for lunch and be back in time for dinner here. Somewhere. The technology is somewhere. But I want to talk to you about something else. You, you say you have been communicated with by extraterrestrials. Maybe they're extraterrestrials, maybe they're angels, maybe they're demons, uh, you know, whatever name you want to put on it, depending on whatever culture you come from, that's one thing. But how does this communication occur? And uh, I, want, I, want to, I want to discuss that. How, how do you know? I mean, I, I've got all kinds of uh, thoughts here, and I don't know whether they're memories I don't know whether they're being implanted. I don't know whether somebody's communicating for, uh, with me, trying to communicate with me over time and distance. Maybe I've just got a real active imagination. How does it work? Tell me about it. Well, that. about 20 years ago, uh, a couple of years after we first moved out here to uh, Venice Beach, uh, a friend and myself opened a small business in the front yard. Uh, we called it Surf Ranch, where we rented out surfboards. Uh, gave surf lessons and repaired the small uh, 
fractures in the board uh, with the uh, plastic uh, view. And uh, one day, it was a Thursday, uh, we looked up, stayed over our house here, about I don't know, a thousand feet up, and there was a silver ball in the air. And they were there playing bland, and then they were dragging signs out over the ocean. Line. But the silver ball stayed right up over our house all day long that day. And I pointed it out to several different people. And uh, the next day was a Friday, and the silver ball appeared again right up there. So I, I was out sweeping later that afternoon, and I looked up at it, and I said, if, I said, if you want something, just say what it is. And I said that out loud, and the, the thought transmission that I received was, if you're ready, we'll send them down. And I, <laughs> I looked at the ball up in the air, and I said, I'm ready. And so uh, nothing else has happened that Friday. But Saturday, the next day, was a busy day here at Venice uh, on the boardwalk. We have about 175,000 people out here on a weekend. And uh, a gentleman pulled up in his uh, Super Sport, an older model, but beautiful condition, convertible. And he was a big guy, about six foot four, and gets out and gives us a surfboard and took a surf lesson from us that day and then left. And I didn't know until after the fact that he was a representative of the Black Federation come down to uh, enjoy a day with us and uh, take a trip lesson. So since that time, they've been in communication with me uh, regularly. And uh, this last two weeks, they have told me that they are now intervening. And uh, first of all, I asked them if they could bust up the chemtrails, and they said they, they would do just that. So most chemtrails, uh, out here, in fact, all of them over my head are all uh, disintegrated as soon as they attempted to be laid. I also asked them if they could take care of the cleanup of the Gulf water down in, New Mex down in Mexico and uh, also uh, stunt the harp systems in Alaska and Nevada that are putting out signals trying to uh, cause disruptions in our uh, Earth's surface. So those three things I asked them to help us with, but they said they were taking care of a few more for us. So that's Basically, how I got to know the Galactic So, Federation. so you're talking. You're talking about you. They have appeared to you in person, but you don't know who they are. You don't know necessarily. Uh, there's no identifying marks. No, I didn't know at the time who who the uh, person was that was coming down to meet me. But uh, I just treat everybody nicely and with respect. So uh, I guess I made a good impression on them. Now, now, but, does, so this communication is telepathic. Are you aware of a, a another person on the uh, generating end of that thought? Or oh, yeah. Well, it's just like a telephone call, Clayton. When someone when your phone rings, you don't know who it is, but as soon as you talk to them, you know right away that it's me, or right away that it's Lady K1, or right away that it's, uh, you know, your son. You know by the voice. And this is the type of communication that I've become over the years real uh, adept at is, is telling just who whose voice it is in my head that I'm talking with. In fact, I, I even know a lot of those demons. They've been coming around for all my life trying to tempt me with everything under the sun. So I just, I, I'll tell you, nowadays, as soon as I hear a demonic entity speak to me, I go, I tell my uh, guardian angel, throw him in the can and ship him out of here. And they know they're done. Uh, so they don't come around me and bother me anymore. But uh, I know the voices of these uh, Galactic Federation members, and I know the voice of our own creator and uh, his, his uh, female counterparts, our mothers, and I know, uh, I know the sound of different, different individuals' voices. That's what it boils down to. Now, I don't know whether I hear voices, if these thoughts come to me in my dreams, if I'm tapping into the Akashic Records, I don't know exactly where it comes from. But it's almost like having a conversation. That's why in this next issue, uh, this next book that I'm putting out, that I'm working on right now, I basically uh, am writing it like I'm having a conversation with a 10,000 year old being. Is that, uh, am I writing fiction, or is my, is this uh, just, uh, is this my particular forte, or is there something possibly more to it than that? I think it sounds about right. I think, I think it just takes time and experience for all of us to learn who we are and who they are, and 
just what's really going on here. It's just, it's, it's, in it's other words, in other words, what I'm trying to do is put a physical appearance, a a a, a very uh, a physical appearance on on some things that, according to dogma, our mind shies away from. Our, our we can't think about. You know, I've I've asked people, well, hey, you know, what what if what if when Jesus and the devil were walking out there in the desert and the devil offered. Uh, him all the kingdoms on earth if he'd go along with him. What what if he accepted? Now if you're if you're if you're, you know, into a program by the religions, you instantly get offended. If I say to you, Hey, uh, the Jews weren't the chosen people, we were, we were. We walked out, we crossed the Caucasus Mountain and became a con suddenly you're going to be you're gonna be angry at me. So Maybe that's the reason that I, I I'm thinking in this line along the lines of Lucifer as being possibly a good guy because I, maybe maybe the uh, God that wanted Abraham to bash his son's brains out or, or sacrifice him on the altar wasn't really the good guy. What uh, what what are the chances of that? What do you feel? What do you, what do you think? Well, I say anything is possible in this material universe we're in. Anything is possible and uh, there's a lot left to happen. Sure, that, that me what what you're saying is is exactly the point that I made that maybe all of these conspiracy theories are true. In one some point in time, in one particular locale, maybe it was the end of the world for everybody on the Titanic, huh? It was, it was. Well, it was the end of the world before it flipped over the last time or two too. It was the end of the world when the dinosaurs were here for them. It, it, it's been the end of the world again and again for all time for everybody. I, I, now, I think, I personally think, and this is what I, I have uh, postulated here, that, uh, hey, uh, maybe we've been in Armageddon for the last hundred years and they just didn't tell us about it. I mean, 140 million people, 200 million people, maybe a billion people massacred by their own governments or in wars or in disease or famines and that's more than any other century in the world. We've had killed more people in this century in senseless wars than any time before in history. So maybe we're exactly. in Armageddon. Maybe, the, maybe the, the, Do you think the paper wouldn't tell us about it if we were in Armageddon? You think? Hell no. <laughs> in fact, they know the, the high ups, the elite, they know what's going on and what, what the fix is. They, they, they know they're trying to corral the people, take away everything, all their rights and everything, and kill off even more. But we're not going to let them. We're here to make a change. <laughs> now, I, I talk point. about it in one of my, in one of my books, uh, the ones that I'm working on now, that I intend to serialize. I'm going to do this uh, chapter by chapter, David. I'm probably I'm going to put it out. This this uh, what what I shared with people earlier on the thing was my first chapter, and uh, you know in this in this book we're going to touch on a lot of things in history that you're just going to take a little different look at. You know, when was the Titanic an accident, or was it created by a a Jesuit uh, controlled captain who's running it through a my uh, uh, an iceberg field? at full speed because uh -huh. he also contained a number a number of uh, let's see uh oh I lost something here <laughs>